Hi, I'm Michael Valenti and welcome to my cycling art studio. Today I'm going to give you um, some tips on how you can draw faces by using some very simple shapes. So I'm going to start with um, a large piece of watercolor paper that I have here. And I have this cool little frame that I uh, have made a long, long time ago. And I put that down here and I use that with my pencil to draw a very simple line around the whole page. Now I have kind of a frame. You probably can't see that very well, but it's there, it's very light. It's guidelines, really. Um, then on my page, what I want to do here is I wanna put four different um, shapes. So up here, I'm gonna make a very light oval shape. And down here, I'm gonna make kind of a triangle shape, okay? Now these are just very simple shapes. Um, over to this side, I'm going to make a circle and right up here, I'm going to make a square. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because, um, I want you to see that faces come in all different kinds of shapes. They're not all the same. Halfway through each of them, draw kind of a little simple dividing line. Okay. That simple dividing line is really how heads work. From there, you now have a place where eyes can go, okay? So you can put a couple little eyes, very light, on all of these. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the pencil to create some guidelines, and then we're gonna use a pen to fill things in, and then we're gonna use some watercolor on top of that to make it look pretty. Halfway down from the, the first dividing line you made, um, make another little mark. That's a nose. That's where your nose ends. That's pretty much the same math with everybody. Halfway, halfway, and guess what? Halfway. There's your mouth. Halfway. Halfway again. So now, once you've done that, you have the basic outlines. Ears, look at my ears, see? They sit right around where my eyes are. So there's an ear, there's an ear. And again, I'm doing these as very simple shapes. Okay, to start. Little semicircle ears. Yeah, semicircle. I learned that word yesterday. So we finished that out. Now, of course, we've got to come back. We've got to put in all the details. We've got neck. That's is pretty much, let's say that's a bit of a square. Again, all of these things are going to just kind of vary as you do your drawing, depending on what it is you need to do. Hair. Now, on each of these people, we have to decide what we're gonna do for hair. Is this gonna be a boy? Is it a girl? Is it a man? Is it a woman? All different. They wear a hat. I like a hat. I'm a cycling artist, so I like to draw a lot of cycling caps and things like that, helmets lots of times. So I'm gonna draw a little cycling cap on this guy, very light, and it's really just a couple of half circles. And I'm not even gonna worry about these other guys because I wanna get to my pen. I use a little Sharpie fine point pen once I have my basic shapes worked out. So with this guy here, let's, let's test this pen out. Yeah, it's good. My first guy, we've started with this guy now. Very loosely, we have to decide what's his, what's his attitude, okay? So we'll start with this guy because it's easy. And we're gonna, we're gonna, he's gonna be a happy guy. So we're gonna give him a little nose, right? So he's gonna have a little nose. And of course, he's gonna have his eyes, right? We can go like that. Right down in here, we need some ears, right? You got this thing on your ear. You gotta always throw that in there. You got an ear, right? Now, I'm gonna bring his chin down here. Remember, we made an oval. So this guy has this long kind of an oval shaped face, which is gonna make him look a certain way. Now. We're gonna put that here. Two, four, four. And you don't have to. You don't have to draw along with me. You can look at this stuff, and then you can um, fill it all in later, and do your own drawings, um, or you can just try and stay up, and we'll just keep drawing. So I draw very fast, very loose. Now uh, this guy is not gonna have very long hair at all, but there he is. There's our my basic. My basic cyclist cap kind of guy. We'll go to the next guy, square head guy. So 
with square head guy, uh, I think he's gonna be a guy. And we'll make these two on the bottom, we'll make them women, I guess. So this guy here, let's give him, let's give him a really big nose. So now he's got a really kind of a big nose. All right? He's got a really kind of a big mouth too. And guess what? Square head guy, not too happy. No. So we're gonna give him kind of a brown mouth. Definitely, someone in this needs a butt chin, just because that's what I like to call them. Maybe if you got a butt chin, you don't like that, but ah, it's a butt chin. And let's see here, eyeballs, mm, no. Let's take our square head guy, make a couple of circles. We made glasses. Now, I'm going to put his eyeballs in here, but only so that he can be looking at this guy over here. See? And I'm making them a little bit different. This guy has a different feeling than this guy, because your drawings can change. You don't have to draw the same way all the time. Okay? Now, I think he needs some curly hair, because curly hair is fun. And there we go. Curly hair is fun. Now he needs neck. Definitely he needs a big, thick neck to hold up that big, thick head. All right, our next person. Here is, um, let's make it a woman. We started with a triangle, so she has a long kind of a triangle face. We're not gonna give her big ears. No, we'll give her nice little, little, little ears. But we are going to give her some big hair, okay? And maybe we will also give her, with her big hair that kind of comes down behind her head. Is that ponytail? Now, let's take our girl's eyes and do this with them. And she's kind of looking up at this guy up here. She's got a little bitty nose, and of course, nice little smile. She needs some eyebrows, for sure. Add a little more hair. Now, all of this is gonna become a little bit more obvious once we put some shadows in with our watercolors. There you go, a neck. Little shoulders. Oh, I guess this guy needs a neck and some shoulders too. Now, our last guy here, we made him, uh, we gave him a round head, and uh, we were gonna say this is another lady. So this will be another lady, but let's give her a lot of hair. She gets an earring, sure, because it's my grandma. So, my grandma has round head. I bet yours does too. <laughs> Again, um, we can put any kind of glasses. Just make some cool shapes for glasses because glasses come in all kinds of cool shapes. Put the arms on the glasses over to her ears. A little shape and let's have grandma looking over at this our lady so what happens is they can look straight ahead they can look side to side they can look up they can look this direction and she's got kind of a hmm frowny face like hmm i wonder what's going on over there let's see now all right so this is enough outlines what i like to do at this point is then sometimes since i had this pencil line i use um, a kneaded eraser and i lightly take out some of the pencil lines so that they're not there later and if you're using a sharpie or a pen some people like to use a crayon i would not use an eraser after i use the crayon that would make a big mess um, 
and some people will use a ballpoint pen. I think that would be okay, but I'm not sure. That's why I like a Sharpie. Now over here on this side of my set, my studio setup here, um, I have my half pan of watercolor paints. I got some water. I have my little rag that I use to dab because you, I dab it to, to control the amount of water that I want on the page. And I have some clean water. I also have a white piece of paper right here that I use for testing all of the colors that I make before those colors go on my paper. So I just use a little bit of blue and a little bit of light brown. And those two colors are gonna give me kind of a gray, see? Now, if I want it a little bit bluer than that, which I do, I'll just add a little more blue. So now I've got a nice big fat brush full of paint that I'm gonna put on this guy's face in the direction thinking about where the light's coming from. So for me, the light is coming from this side. So he has a light on this side of him, and that means he has a shadow on this side of him. So very simply, oh, and see, watch this. See, I can, if I touch this, I can clean off that extra little bits of, of um, paint. See, so now my guy feels like he's got a light source coming in this direction. And that helps give your, uh, your heads a rounder shape. See mine, light side, dark side. So let's keep doing that with all of our little friends to get us started. And I like to just use this, this color here as a, as a starting place really, more than anything else. Now this guy's got a big square head, so of course he needs a big shadow under his neck. He's gonna have this big shadow coming down because we're gonna keep the light source the same, okay? Now he's got this big old nose right here and he's got shadows in here. Under his nose, under his mouth, a little in the ear, okay? Now the shadow that I'm putting in now has nothing to do with the color. I'm, I missed my guy's nose shadow, which I have to bring back in, okay? Again, this is a very simple techniques for how you can use shapes and shadows to create your faces and your drawings. Okay? We're gonna stay with we're gonna stay with the same because the light is always coming from the same place unless you have multiple light sources, but in our drawing, we have just one. You can put a little shadow on their shoulder. Okay. Definitely down through here, okay? And now let's, our last lady here, Grandma. Give her some shadow this side of her face. Okay, a little here, boom, boom, boom. Don't think about it too much. Don't, don't, don't be, just paint. Have fun, painting should be fun. Painting should be a lot of fun. One of the things I like to do early on in my paintings, in my drawings, is hit the background. So I'm gonna give each of these guys a little different color background. And what I like to do here, watch, as I come around, is I push the brush away instead of towards. And so what that helps do for me is gives me a little bit of a softer edge, kind of a broken edge. And I like that because it just has a nice, um, it just has a nice feeling, I, I just like that. Let's take our lady here. Let's give her a little green background. Okay. 
Okay. Same thing. Get our backgrounds in. Again, these are very simple shapes that you've turned into faces. And they've used the same math all the way through, half, half, and half to make the eyes, nose, and mouth lines, but they all look very different. Um, last but not least, we'll go here. This is a grandma. Okay. Now, we can take our, I'm going to give, I'm going to keep this very simple, very easy to follow, very traditional. You can make these things any colors you want to your painting. Um, and whatever it is that you do, will be right. I'm gonna gotta go back in for my my um, cap here and um, give them a little shadow side on some of this because I'm making a, a nice little light green kind of a cap. Now everybody knows, let's say, we need some blue hair for grandma, but we don't want to fill all of it in. And let's give our curly hair guy some really dark brown hair, nice. All right, now these are all working to where they have one layer of paint on them. What I like to do before I put a second coat of paint on my watercolors lots of times is I dry it. If I'm outside, it dries fast in the sun, but if I'm in the studio, I use a hairdryer. Now what that lets me do is I can come back in some of my same colors or darker and then what happens is I start getting a little bit more dimension which is really what I'm looking for at for these drugs a little darker darker okay, so now what you start to see is our person starts to have even more dimensions to them. And did you see how I just did that? Um, if I put too much paint on the paper, like I don't, if that's too much paint, I dry my rag and I use my brush and I pick it right back up. So that's a good thing you can learn how to do. It's very simple and you can, you're gonna use that all the time. All the time. And if it's too dark, I'll do the same thing. I just pick it right back up, take some of it away. That way I get to control how much water and how dark things are as I'm drawing and painting. Here we go. 
Now, the same thing applies if we want to do the backgrounds and add a little bit more dimension to them. Again, just a little bit darker. Same colors I used before, but because they're watercolors and watercolors are translucent, the second time it gets darker. So every time you do it, if you did a third time, it would be even darker. Um, every time you do it, you would see that it starts to get a little bit darker. And of course, every time you do it, it's a little bit different because it never ever stays the same. What I like about watercolor paints is that they are predictable, but not predictable. I had a watercolor teacher uh, and he used to call them happy accidents. So what you wanna do when you're painting is control your happy accidents. You want them for sure. There we go. All right. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put my paints away. I'm gonna dry my picture one more time. Here we go, we're all dry. And we are ready for the finishing steps that I always do, which is pen and ink. I have um, uh, quill dip pens that I use and um, my little jar of ink over here. And with that, it helps me just finish out my drawing. Now I keep that very loose feeling that I've already had going and I just keep, keep going with it, all right? But what happens for me is it allows me to have a very playful, fun line that I like. It's very sketchy. Um, it feels very loose and not thought out, even though I have thought about the whole thing the entire time, okay? But it feels like, oh, he just made that up. And a lot of it I do just make up, so. Now this is how I draw a lot of my bicycle drawings. Um, this is how I work when I go to the Tour de France. Uh, and I am uh, outside all day. This is very much how I draw every pretty pretty much every day. I draw this way um, Not always on a big piece of paper sometimes just in my sketchbooks, but um, The more you draw the more fun you have the better you get at it And really if you make a mistake no big deal you get to draw something again so don't worry about mistakes don't worry a lot about it not being right or what somebody else might not like it doesn't matter it's your drawing i'm going to give this guy glasses things here there you go it's your drawing and you're the only person that needs to like it Finish up her hair. Oh, missed his mouth here. And you see, I don't really care whether I, I don't want to copy the exact same line I've already done. No, I want to add to it. I want to add more dimension. I want to add more color. I want to add more fun. So you don't redraw exactly what you've already got. I mean, part of it you can, but all of it really should add up to your drawing that makes you happy. So that is 
how you can use some simple shapes to draw your faces. Square, oval, triangle, and circle. There you go. And so there you go. Voila, we're done. Next time, we'll draw something else. Ciao.